know that what he's prepared, God has placed on his heart for this season and for this group of people. And so, um, yeah, I want you to give him your undivided attention. This is Keegan. Hey, everybody. Uh, how are we doing? Uh, the title of my sermon today is Trust in Him, and it's really about struggle and your faith being tested, and uh, today I also have another thing I'm going to be talking about, and that's addiction. Uh, he put this on my heart today, and uh, it's kind of stronger now due to the worship, but I'm going to start reading. God has laid on my heart to share with you a small part of my story. I am from a blended family, meaning my parents divorced and my mom were remarried. My dad, my biological dad, struggles with a drug and alcohol addiction. This Christmas, I went to spend time with him in that side of my family. My aunt and uncle picked me up, and we drove to my grandparents' house. We had just finished opening presents, and my aunt found a needle on my dad, and my mind just went blank. And my grandma, she did not take that well. She usually freaks out when something like this happens, and she... Yeah, she was just lecturing my dad. And uh, I went, my aunt and uncle live right next to my grandparents. So I went over there and I was just freaking out about the whole situation. And I called my mom and I asked her what I should do. And she said, I think you should try to go home immediately. And I also had her call me, uh, call Pastor Kenny. And I asked him what to do. And he said the same thing. He prayed over me, but I was still freaking out. It felt like nothing was helping. And then, you know how they reco uh, record every Sunday morning and Sunday night? Uh, I went to go watch one of his sermons, and it was uh, God with us. It, that helped me a lot. He read Hebrews 6, 13 through 20, and he explained, when God makes a promise, he is good for his word. People feel like God has done them wrong, but God cannot do you wrong because God is a promise-keeping God. And then that helped me so much, and I could actually sleep that night. And uh, then my uncle took me back home, and I was just freaking about that whole, freaking about that whole time. And uh, then uh, next Sunday, during altar call, I went forward, and I was still a little, I was, when I say a little, I mean I was just upset. And uh, I walked up, and pastor called all the men of the church, and they prayed over me. And all my sadness and anger just left. God is good like that. He takes away the hurt and the pain. I just had to trust him. And I just want to thank everyone who prayed for my dad and uh, me. Uh, that really helped me. But uh, right after all this happened, our church did a 21-day fast. When Pastor Kenny said, we're going to start fasting, I'm going to be honest, I didn't know what that was. But I asked my parents, and they told me, and I saw a chance to strengthen my faith and make my connection with God stronger. James 1, 3 through 4 says, For you know that when your faith is tested, your, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when your endurance is developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. I decided to fast two meals per day, and it was hard, but also amazing. I felt like I could hear God's voice more clearly, and I felt at peace about the situation with my dad because I was leaning on God with, for all my strength and not depending on myself. It all, oh, sorry. Through it all, I had to trust him. I'm going to share this one story about... Uh, one of my friends, he was spiritual, but always talking bad about Christians. He never had a good reason to, but he asked me a question, and it was, uh, I think it was like, this was a while ago, I can't really remember, but uh, it was like, Genesis said, Adam and Eve were made Christ-like, but Jesus Christ wasn't born uh, during that time. And I had to explain to him, uh, they're made God-like, you know, because that's what Genesis, I think I have a, I think I have it here. One second, sorry. Um, I don't think I have it, but uh, Genesis says that Adam and Eve were made uh, godlike, and Jesus was, and then John, uh, Jesus was uh, present during uh, creation of God, uh, the earth and everything. So that's John says that, and then he got really upset and he didn't have anything to say back, so he cursed at me. People are going to try to discourage you and pull you away from God. But Romans 12, 2 says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. I feel like a lot of us should take that to heart because in this world, a lot of bad things are happening and we need to change the behavior that we have. 
but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And Joshua 1, 9 says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So we can find comfort in knowing God is always with us. I want to encourage you to start reading your Bible and praying daily. The way Jesus fought off the devil in the wilderness was by speaking the word. How do we do that if we aren't reading and praying? God wants to bless you. It might take time, but you just need to trust in him. Psalms 34, 19 through 22 says, The righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to rescue each time. For the Lord protects the bones of the righteous. Not one of them is broken. Calamity will surely destroy the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. But the Lord will redeem those who serve him. No, no one will who takes refuge in him will be condemned. And this is the part where I want to talk about addiction. Um, I want to tell a little bit about my story, how I was addicted to pornography. Uh, about four years ago, um, I started doing it. And that was probably the darkest time of my life. And uh, I, re I, had no, I didn't really have a great connection with my mom and dad because I stopped, kind of stopped talking to them when I started doing that. And my dad, he, he, was in a, he, had a, he messed up again. And uh, I kind of didn't really feel it because when you, watch, when you watch that and do it for a long time, you feel dead inside. It's like feel nothing like people could say the meanest things to me and I just didn't I didn't care I didn't I didn't have any feeling and uh, as soon as I started going to this church I felt like I felt me again I felt like I could I actually felt feelings and uh, I felt like I feel like someone needed to hear this because addiction is really bad and uh, I said then Quan I think your mom uh, preached uh, a few months ago, and uh, she was talking about how pornography and drugs, and you need to stop. And we brought, we all wrote a you know piece of paper, and then we ripped it in half. And God kept nudging me to tell my stepdad because he had the same he had the same problem. And uh, when I finally told him, he comforted me and told me that it's okay, and we'll we'll help you through this. And uh, that really helped me, and now I want to start. Do, I want to start preaching, and uh, I just felt like someone needed to hear this. And another addiction is this: your phone. You guys need to stop. You need to stop watching your phone, read the Bible, and you need to start praying because this leads you away from the Bible. It leads you away from Jesus. Because I see so many people, they're on their phone all the time, and they're and they say. I don't have time to read the Bible. Yeah, you do. You're watching your phone all the time. So you need to start praying and reading the Bible every day because that has healed me so much. God healed me, and I know he can heal you too. He will help your family, heal you from addiction, and so much more if you just allow him to. You just need to have faith and put your trust in him. And uh, I wanted to end this off in prayer. Um, so everyone bow your head and close your eyes. Lord, I thank you for this day. I pray for anyone who's having family uh, problems, struggle with addiction, if they're having problems just not reading the Bible enough, and uh, I pray that all goes well for them. In Jesus' name, amen. If